Hi, I'm Mike Thompson, and welcome to my series on design for 3D printing. Contrary to popular belief, you cannot 3D print anything, at least if you don't want a good quality part. You must design your part for 3D printing. In this series, I'll provide you with the tips and tricks for designing and printing the best possible part. I'll cover basic topics, as well as dive into engineering and manufacturing. In this part, I'm going to talk about how the printer works. Like I mentioned previously, you cannot 3D print anything. You must design your part for 3D printing. Unfortunately, a lot of the parts that are available online for download and printing do not actually make for good quality parts. There's a lot that you will gain from designing and printing parts yourself. However, in order for you to begin designing, you first need to understand how the machine works. Then you can use this to your advantage and avoid some of the common mistakes. The most common 3D printing technology like this is fused filament molding, fused deposition molding, FFM, FDM, it goes by several names. But it's basically a hot glue gun that goes back and forth to build up an entire layer and then it builds up another layer on top of that all the way up until your part is finished. The extruder head only builds in the XY plane. It cannot travel diagonally or vertically to build your part while it's extruding. This property is probably the most important aspect of designing your 3D prints. And you can either use this to your advantage or you'll end up with a broken part. 3D printing is called rapid prototyping compared to traditional methods, but it's still relatively slow. It can take several hours to build up an entire part. One thing the machine does though, to speed this up, is that it only prints the faces of your part as solids. It might surprise you to learn that a typical fused filament part is not actually made of solid plastic. If it were, it would be very heavy, very expensive, and very slow. The slicing software used to prepare the print only cares about the edges and faces of the model, and a solid part is not built as a solid part. There is a skeleton printed inside to give the part rigidity and strength. This property is called the infill, and the faces and edges are referred to as the shell. The process the computer software goes through to prepare your machine code for the printer is called slicing. The software analyzes the model in thin slices from the bottom to the top and generates the code for the extruder head to build each layer. All the edges and all the infill. Now an important note here, it slices your model from whatever bottom and top you specify when you set your model up in the software. This is quite often not the actual bottom and top of the model when it's in its normal useful position. The slicer will allow you to scroll through the layers and then take a look at how your part is being built. I recommend you always have a look at the layers because you just might find some trouble spots or glitches in the code that would prevent your part from printing. Once it's all ready to go, a plastic filament, most likely PLA, is softened by a hot extruder nozzle, usually in the range of 200 degrees Celsius, give or take 20 degrees. I found that 220 is best for the printers that we use here in the lab. I'm not sure why all the 3D printers I've come across are in metric, uh, but I'm slowly getting used to it. The extruder filament must also stay in place somehow while the part is printing. For this, the build plates can either be heated or not. A heated build plate keeps the plastic just slightly soft so that it sticks to the bed. A MakerBot printer, like back there, just uses what is essentially masking tape on a glass plate. The slightly rough texture of the masking tape allows the part to stick, whereas it wouldn't on a cold glass plate. Well, that's pretty much all there is to how the machine works. In the next part of this series, I'm going to talk about laying out your prints in the software to get the best quality prints. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm Mike Thompson, coming to you from the OU Innovation Hub Fab Lab. And what do you want to make?